science. We get experimental yes. science. We're curious, non judgmental. Ancient amber. Here is a size. So it is half a centimeter in length. Let's take a zoom in and see what it might be. Again, remember y'all, 33.0 million years old. Whoa, y'all, look at that. Man, I don't think it's a roach, but that is beautiful. Lovely wings with, it looks like wing spots. And it looks like we probably will be able to get a good shot of the eyes as well. Let me know y'all if you have any guesses as to what this might be. Here is one possibility of what it could look like a modern day plant hopper but plant hopper y'all may very well be this critter and that one had a very similar composition uh, right there look at that whoa heck yeah that's what we want to see not an illusion here just remember we are getting color a couple of color notes to see one is you're getting some iridescence so down here that is the reflection of the led lights so there is the setup has a gooseneck, so two LED lights that I can adjust and wiggle around, and an overhead halogen light. The halogen light, when shining on an insect or anything with iridescence, will not demonstrate iridescence, because uh, the halogen light just doesn't excite anything in that way. But here, this region right here is in fact iridescent. See, look at that. As I'm moving the light, do you see that metallic sheen that comes? So that is all iridescence. That is true structural color that we're seeing here. Here, right, to me, that looks like we're seeing true colors, but it's in a yellow stone. So we can't necessarily comment on what the true color is because it's getting obscured by the actual colors themselves, right? Like it's that yellow hue is gonna change what colors hits our eyes, but the iridescence is real. Let's try to flip it over. This is the ventral side, so the little, the underbelly. Not a little bit, whoa, here we go, look at that. The legs are actually, it's at a slight angle, so it's not a clear overhead view, but I think the angle is really neat because we can see here are the legs quite readily visible. There is the underside of the wings. We'll take a close look at that because that see-through is really pretty. Eyes on either side. Think this is a leg? We'll make sure that's the case. The head structure, we'll take a closer look as well. Yes, Kai, this is the iridescence of the underside. So one good way to visualize if that is what we're seeing is I can move. See, look, I'm moving the LED. If you focus where that hand is, you can see how it's changing. Although on the rest of the whole part of the body, there's a fair bit of that shimmer. So yeah, that's that structural color again. Presumably like we, you know, we've talked about that the, the structure of the exoskeleton is not flat, but it has like all these nooks and divots and grooves and crannies like all going throughout. We can't see it with this kind of camera. You need a scanning electron microscope to be able to see that. But as we go back and forth, can get the iridescence image of it. And when the light bounces off them, they reflect with these different colors. Some light gets absorbed, other gets reflected, and that's what's causing these prism patterns. And yes, insects see this. So Ubi, chat, sexual selection acts on these patterns, meaning females prefer certain colors over another. And so when males are doing a mating dance, try to mate with a female, they shake their wing towards the female, and the female would you know choose to either accept the approaches by the male or shoo it away and apparently the females would prefer more blues but that translates to thinner wings the crazy part then is with thinner wings the trade-off is that they're more likely to rip and be damaged and so this is usually the issue with sexual selection is there's a beneficial thing in terms of being like more attractive to the female but then there's some kind of fitness detriment. And the fitness detriment here is that it's gonna hurt the wings and they'll be less likely to survive because you know, a damaged wing, they're not gonna be able to make it. But yeah, that's just the wing appearance. Um, so that's we're looking at the abdomen and the thorax. And uh, we, there is this neat little part of the wing down here. So right here, Tommy, that is a folded up wing. So you can see the underside of the wing here, and then this part is folded up. So there's a little bit of an imperfection there, but it's super cool to see. Not perfect in terms of science, but in terms of like prettiness, it's not half bad. This head is a much cleaner look at this being an actual plant hopper. They have these rounded, almost cicada-like looking heads. Ooh, look at that. That's a nice, we can even see the individual cells right here, the omatidia. So here, each of those dots are the eye cells called the omatidium, singular, plural, omatidia. There is the antenna right there. You can see it's a little nub. 
and it goes that little string right there is the actual antennal structure so super super cool to be able to see something like this very well preserved the head structure is really on point like it is a this is a really really beautiful specimen y'all 